In this video, we're going to talk about relapsing polychondritis. Relapsing means coming and going. Poly means many or multiple. And chondritis means inflammation of the cartilage. Relapsing polychondritis is an autoimmune condition that causes inflammation of the cartilage throughout the body. It is characterized by recurrent inflammation and destruction of cartilaginous structures, such as those found in the ears, nose, joints, and tracheobronchial tree. The exact cause of relapsing polychondritis remains unclear and is thought to involve abnormal immune response targeting cartilage components. It's thought to involve both cell-mediated and humoral immune responses, with antibodies being produced towards type 2, collagen, and matrilin 1. And these antibodies are found at sites of inflammation, such as here in the ear, which is predominantly made up of elastic cartilage. Humans have three types of cartilage in the body, and relapsing polychondritis attacks all of them. These include highline cartilage, such as your nose, larynx, and those that cover your joints, fibrocartilage, the ones that are on your axial skeleton, your spine, and elastic cartilage, such as those found in the ears. Recurrent inflammation of cartilage causes damage and even deformity. But the inflammation can also affect non-cartilaginous uh, tissue, such as those rich in proteoglycans. And these are things such as blood vessels. So what clinical manifestations can people with relapsing polychondritis have? Well, firstly, as the name suggests, relapsing polychondritis means relapsing, coming and going, and polychondritis, inflammation of multiple cartilaginous structures in the body. The onset of inflammation is often abrupt, with the appearance of one or two sites of cartilaginous inflammation, such as the ears and the joints. The pattern and severity varies amongst people. Systemic inflammatory features such as fevers, fatigue, and weight loss is common. Ear involvement is the most frequent presenting manifestation of relapsing polychondritis. Patients often experience auricular chondritis, inflammation of the outer ear leading to red, swollen, and painful ears, usually sparing the lobule. Recurrent episodes of auricular inflammation can lead to cauliflower ear deformities, such as those seen in people who do UFC. Nasal involvement include nasal congestion, rhinorrhea, and epistaxis. Nasal chondritis, inflammation of the cartilage in the nose, can lead to nasal bridge collapse and saddle nose deformity. Eye involvement is very common and include conjunctivitis, scleritis, and episcleritis. Arthralgia and arthritis affects one third of people and it can affect both small and large joints. Laryngotracheal bronchial involvement occurs in 50% of people with relapsing polychondritis and is among the most serious manifestation of the condition. The larynx, the trachea, and the bronchus are also made up of elastic and highline cartilage. For example, in this cross section of the trachea, you can see it's made up of highline cartilage. Now, inflammation of the larynx and the trachea causes symptoms including hoarseness and shortness of breath. The inflammation of the structures, for example, the trachea, can lead to mucosal edema, destruction and collapse of the tracheal cartilage, and it can lead to tracheal stenosis or stricture, which may lead to life-threatening airway obstruction, necessitating tracheostomy. Another important manifestation is cardiovascular involvement, which includes vasculitis, and relapsing polychondritis, as mentioned, can also target non cartilaginous structures such as blood vessel. Inflammation here can affect small, medium, and large blood vessels. Inflammation of the aortic ring can lead to dilation of the aortic root and aortic regurgitation, which can then also lead to arrhythmias. Skin involvement is not very specific and include many things, including purpura, erythema nodosum, or urticaria. Relapsing polychondritis can occur by itself as a primary issue or typically associated with other diseases. A lot of people with relapsing polychondritis 
will have another rheumatological disorder, such as rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, vasculitis. And another important association is VEXA syndrome. This is a rare syndrome, predominantly in males because it's X-linked, and it should be considered a very important differential with someone who has chondritis, especially in the presence of abnormal blood work. Diagnosis of relapsing polychondritis is based on recognition of typical clinical features. There are many criteria out there, but McAdam and Associates uh, have created one that is useful, and it requires three or more of the following clinical features. Bilateral auricular chondritis, non-erosive seronegative inflammatory polyarthritis, nasal chondritis, eye involvement, laryngotracheal bronchial involvement, inner ear involvement, and cartilage biopsy, which confirms a compatible sort of inflammatory picture. For treatment of relapsing polychondritis, it depends if it's mild or severe. In mild cases of chondritis, the use of non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs and oral corticosteroids are used. In more aggressive disease, or those that are recurrent, the use of higher doses of prednisone and also immunosuppression is important, with the addition of things such as methotrexate, azathioprine, and cyclophosphamide. Biological agents also have a role, TNF-alpha being the main one. Of course, remember to look out and manage complications of relapsing polychondritis, including heart disease and laryngotracheal bronchial involvement. So in summary, relapsing polychondritis is an autoimmune disorder characterized by inflammation of cartilage throughout the body, leading to things such as saddle nose deformity and cauliflower ear from auricular chondritis. Thank you for watching.